today we consider the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. How we live and interact with others is very important, for we are representing the Holy Spirit. How we act when we are alone is important, for the Spirit is always present with us, and He has no desire to take part in sin of any kind. As we reflect, we remember the glorious news that we were bought with a price, the blood of Jesus, which forgives us all our sins and removes all our shame. For that, we are most thankful. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Online. Hello and welcome to our recorded worship service here at Faith Lutheran Church in Huntington Beach, California. Uh, this is the second Sunday after the Epiphany, so we're learning who the person of Jesus Christ is. Uh, last Sunday we celebrated his baptism, and today we uh, read more about Jesus being revealed to us as the Son of God, the Messiah. If you happen to be here in Southern California, we welcome you to join us. Every Sunday morning we have worship outside due to the pandemic at 9.30 a.m., please come and join us in that worship in person. Please also join us in celebrating worship today at this time online. Thank you and welcome. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, you have searched and known us. You discern our thoughts from afar. Where shall we go from your Spirit? Or where shall we flee from your presence? If we ascend to heaven, you are there. If we make our bed in Sheol, you are there. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. We are bought with a price the blood of Christ. Indeed, we were bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and God calls us to glorify God with our bodies. But we have failed to do this. We have lived as if our bodies and lives are our own, as if your son had not bought, him, bought them with his blood. Such sins cause deep shame. Yet, even now, our Heavenly Father invites us to come to Him and ask for forgiveness. Please take a moment for reflection.
Now please confess with me. Heavenly Father, we have sinned by the things we have done and by the things we have left undone. Forgive us, remove the shame that clings to us, and make us new creations for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, in his infinite mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer and die for your sins, and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. He also has risen from the dead, and he makes us more than conquerors as he lives through us. As a called and ordained servant of the word of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. We are forgiven in Christ. Our shame is removed. So please join me in prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading is from 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 20. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could not barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went back and lied down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went to lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family, from beginning to end, for I told him that I would judge his family forever, because of the sin he knew about his sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore I swore to the house of Eli the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli called to him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, Here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked, Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. 
The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Epistle today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at the 12th verse. I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You say, food is for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By His power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and He will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ Himself? Shall I then take members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never! Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. 
Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was, was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ.
Well, two weeks ago, um, we uh, acknowledged one of the great saints of the church, uh, a Reverend William Leah. Now, Leah was uh, a young pastor in Bavaria, in the south uh, uh, eastern corner of Germany. He finished his theological studies um, in the early 1840s, and he began to think about where he might like to serve as a parish pastor. Now, Leah had some characteristics that were viewed by some as virtues and by others as liabilities. You see, he was idealistic, determined, courageous, outspoken, and in the mouths of his detractors, brash. Now, while studying theology, he had come to the conclusion that his expression of Christianity, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Bavaria, was too worldly. It was giving in to the relativizing uh, of what he believed was a clear and pure gospel message, one that not to be compromised. Now, Leo was especially concerned about the confessional stance of the church in his generation. He wanted a clear, solid, straightforward approach to Christian doctrine to be lifted up. Now this did not sit well with the more accommodating leadership of the church in Bavaria. And even though he was a gifted preacher, uh, one who appeared to have a, a great future awaiting him in, in what could have been one of the large prestigious congregations in the city of Nuremberg. His supervisor saw to it that he got no reward for what they saw to be his stubbornness. And so when it came time for Leah to be assigned to a congregation, he got the shock of his life instead. Instead of being asked uh, to the ministerial staff of a, of a large city parish, he was assigned to the backwater, a village with an almost unspellable and unpronounceable name, one that most considered a mud hole of a place. In the village of Neuendetislau, the young clergyman could have fallen into despair and cursed his very bad luck, but he didn't. He decided to put his considerable gifts for ministry to work and to borrow a modern phrase, to bloom where he was planted. Now another phrase was probably though in the back of his mind. It would have been a line from today's gospel reading. Can anything good come out of a dead end village, Nazareth? Can anything good come out of a mud hole of a Noyan Dedeslau? Well, Leah spent his entire ministry there. And over time, the Lutheran congregation at Noyan Dedeslau, once considered to be on its last legs and ready to be shut down, became a thriving and rapidly growing faith community. Leah was responsible for turning this mud hole of a place into a thriving ministry center. His parish gave birth to schools for children and adults, training centers for deaconesses and missionary pastors, a hospital and an orphanage. 150 years later, Tourists visiting St. Lorenz, the, the largest Lutheran congregation in Nuremberg, Germany, are greeted with displays describing the significant ministry and mission outreach work of the Bavarian Lutheran Church. And an interesting and ironic sentence in that display declares, if you want to see this ministry being carried out at its best, you need to visit the village of Noyan Dedeslau. Can anything good come out of a mud hole? Can anything good come out of a dying inner city congregation?
out of a tiny group in a, a suburban church trying to do something to improve the world in some small way? Or out of a handful of committed church folk eager to change their neighborhood, their block, their town, or their city when the group is only populated by pious nobodies? Well, the implied answer in today's gospel reading is a resounding yes. That's where good things have almost always come from. Now, the German pastor Leah is somewhat of a, a modern Nathaniel. Our gospel reading is about all we hear about Nathaniel until chapter 21 of John, where he is among uh, those on the boat when Jesus appeared on the shore and told them to cast their nets on the other side if they wanted to make a catch and then nearly caused them to scuttle the ship. This was the, the resurrected Jesus, the Jesus who appeared after his crucifixion and gave hope to those who had abandoned hope. Here's what Frederick Beekner writes about Nathaniel. He says, Nathaniel doesn't appear on any lists of apostles, but he probably considered it honor enough just to have been on hand that morning on the beach, especially considering that unfortunate remark he'd made long ago about Nazareth. So that's about all we know about Nathaniel. But the most remarkable part of the story is not that Nathaniel believed, but that Jesus, in a phrase, gave Nathaniel his first glimpse of who Nathaniel really was. Here is a true Israelite in whom there is no deceit. You know, Nathaniel had never thought of it that way before. But come to think about it, that is who he was. And he knew immediately that he was in the presence of someone exceptional, someone whose importance was of a, a different kind than anything he had ever known before. A sense of calling, you see, comes both from deep within, but also from unexpected sources that lie without. In the casual come and see that Philip off offered him transformed a, a whole life inside and out. It requires listening, even if we resist it at first. In 1923, George Bernard Shaw wrote St. Joan, a play, a play about Joan of Arc. Joan, in classic irony, was burned at the stake in 1431 for presumed heresies. Yet she was elevated to sainthood by the very church that condemned her, albeit 500 years after her death. <laughs> A scene, though, from the plain depicts the Archbishop and King Charles questioning Joan. The Archbishop asks, How do you know you are right? Joan answers, My voices. The king interrupts, Oh, your voices, your voices. Why don't the voices come to me? I'm the king, not you. And Joan responds, Oh, they do come to you, but you do not hear them. Nathaniel listened to the voice of Jesus and instead of, the, instead of his own voice, his own prejudices and small thinking. You see, the, the greatest gift any of us has to give another is just this view of who they are. Not as a, a result of some deep inner search, but often in the twinkling of an eye in a phrase. We tell someone who they are and what they are meant to be in this world. That is a gift 
beyond measure. It is a gift that the people of the church give to one another. It means growing, if you will, where you are, being the person that God called you and gifted you to be. You know, we can be so thankful to God and to congregations of believers like us who have been called to work in Christ's church with useful work to do for the sake of something greater than ourselves. In the process of being the church, I suspect that we have often discovered that there is more in us than we had ever expected or suspected there was. Nathaniel said to Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I mean, it was a small town, very undistinguished. Nothing prestigious had ever been associated with us. What's more, Nazareth doesn't even, men, doesn't even merit a mention in the Old Testament. But Nathaniel put aside his prejudices when Jesus caused him to see more than who he was, than he had ever seen before. And Nathaniel became a new person. His old life was gone forever. You see, you and I may find ourselves saying of the people of our own church, can anything good come out of this place? Other churches near us certainly have more prestige. Oh, we may be a small town infamous for surfing and out of control Fourth of July parties. Our schools and sports teams don't make the state playoffs or, or beat modern day. And besides, our town doesn't even rate a mention in the Hebrew scriptures. But the people of this church open themselves up in ways that are beyond what any of us could do individually. And our gifts in our ministry are unexpected, sometimes even to ourselves. You know, there's no question that this pandemic has had a huge effect on our church, and the church at large for that matter. We have no idea of what's going to happen once everyone is vaccinated, once all the restrictions are lifted. What we do know is that things are going to change. It's not going to be the same. And I hope and pray that we find renewed energy and continue to grow to see more in the life of our church than we thought we could ever, uh, ever see or that we thought would ever be there. I hope that we will grow to see more and more as we open ourselves up to new opportunities for ministry in the name of the one who calls us, that no matter who we are, no matter how inconspicuous our talents, that God has work for us to do in this place. You know, I doubt Jesus' friends and relatives ever told him to bloom where he was planted. I mean, that's an expression that belongs to our age. In fact, there, there's every chance that the people who knew Jesus as a youth or a, a young adult may have entertained serious doubts about him ever amounting to anything much. Like Leah, they may have found him to, to be pushy and overly idealistic and, and rash and, and, and totally unrealistic. We can only be thankful that he didn't stay in Nazareth. We can only be thankful ministry pioneers in our day don't give up and quit. And we can be thankful that many people in this congregation today, perhaps also you, have decided to bloom where they're planted and to become instruments of God.
that's hopeful for our shared future. You see, God always prospers the work of the faithful, even in ways that we don't anticipate. And so as Philip said, come and see. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who together with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy Spirit, from sin and sorrow, set us free. May we, your living temples, be. Spirit, inspire all people as they serve in their vocations. Grant them creativity, wisdom, discernment, and courage to follow where you lead. From sin and sorrow set us free. May we, your living temples, be. Spirit, you are the comforter sent from heaven. Bring your comfort to all those who are suffering in grief, especially those that we name before you now in our hearts. Point them to the hope of the resurrection to eternal peace and life with Jesus. From sin and sorrow set us free. May we, your living temples, be. Spirit, strengthen all those who struggle with addictions. Break their bondage. Lead them to get the help they need. And remind them that you dwell within them. From sin and sorrow set us free. May we, your living temples, be. Spirit, look with favor upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering, especially Ralph, Lori, Ken, Connie, Sandy, Jim, and Raleigh, Cynthia, Faye, Callie, April, Chloe, Emily, Jackie, Jan, David, Marge, Mark, Ed, Adrian, Linda, Kurt, Charles, Paula, Marlene, Diane, June, and all those that we name before you now in our hearts. Have mercy upon them and heal them according to your good and gracious will. From sin and sorrow set us free. May we, your living, temples be. We ask also that you'd watch over all those who have other needs, those who have needs of a job, those who have needs that are temporal, that, that, um, of uh, family, of home, of relationships. We name them before you now in our hearts. Watch over Darwin and Suzanne and Art. From sin and sorrow set us free. May we, your living, temples be. Lord, enable us to be your hands and feet, to love and serve all those around us. Spirit, we commend all these things to you and your infinite wisdom and guiding. 
For you live and reign with the Father and the Son, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious and merciful to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>